Hey guys, this is Heroic Flamingo and welcome to episode 12 of my Guild Wars 2 personal story walkthrough. In this episode, we're going to be doing the story mode dungeon Ascalonian Catacombs. So, although the dungeons aren't technically part of the personal story, they do the story mode dungeons do have quite a lot of interesting story elements to it, so I feel like it would be appropriate to do it as part of this guide. So, dungeons are five player instances, so you'll have to find a group to play with. Um, and the, the story mode dungeons aren't difficult at all so don't worry about that um, but once you've done them you can unlock explorable mode dungeons but as part of this walkthrough I think that doing the dungeons would be an appropriate thing to do so just to let you know once you turn to level 30 this is when you can do the first dungeon Ascalonian Catacombs so you receive two pieces of mail when you turn level 30 first one here an introduction from your herald it says greetings we've not met I have long been a follower of your exploits. I am a collector of tales of great daring and heroism, and your name has come up increasingly in the stories that have been reported to me. I have spoken with your mentor, and the suggestion was made that I contact you and add your stories to my collection. Your mentor was a member of an adventuring group known as Destiny's Edge. They were legendary heroes, but went their separate ways about five years ago, for reasons I have yet to discover. None have chosen to share that story with me. If you discover the nature of their separation, I would be most appreciative. Thank you for your help in this, and I will get in contact with you in the future and hope to keep you in touch with you with the whereabouts of your mentor and other members of Destiny's Edge. Through this I will remain your herald. So that's an introduction to your herald, and each time you get to a appropriate level to, um, to do a new dungeon, you'll get a uh, little letter here from your herald, like I have here, explaining the new dungeon. So, the restless ghost of the Ascalonian Catacombs. Hail, mighty hero. Destiny's Edge was a guild of legend, and it saddens me to hear they no longer wish to be together. However, I've heard through my sources that Aester Gulking has made a beeline for the catacombs beneath old Ascalon. I don't know why she's going to go into that haunted ruin, as it is swamped with human ghosts, victims of the faux fire. More importantly, the catacombs are in the heart of Ashford, which is now Char territory, and Ritlock will not be happy with this particular Norn tromping through his territory. Thought you might be interested, your herald. So as you can see, these dungeons will give quite a lot of extra information on the background of Destiny's Edge um, and what happened that led to their um, uh, breaking up. So what I'll do is I'll find a group, head into uh, head into Ascalon and Catacombs, and then we'll get started. Right, so I found my party here. So I've got four other players, so there's five of us. I'm here at the Ascalonian Catacombs which is in the plains of Ashford in Char territory in Ascalon and we're ready to go so once you're ready to go enter the instance enter story mode you're not the reinforcements I expected but you'll do that fool Norn air has stirred up the ghosts down here let me brief you this place has a history, and I don't want your ignorance getting us killed. This was originally Charland. The humans pushed us out and built Ascalon on top of it. Over 200 years ago, we took our land back. The human king, Adelberg, watched his soldiers panic as we breached the city gates. Facing certain defeat, the doomed king refused to surrender. Retreat! Retreat is not an option! Burn smashed his ancient blade, Magder. Cursed Ascalon. You will not abandon me! The blast incinerated the attacking legions and turned the defending humans into vengeful spirits. We will never surrender! Never! see the living as invaders. They show no mercy and no weariness. Only blind hatred. Battleburn's hatred. And now, air's gone right into the dead king's lair. What a mess. We're going after her. She's causing trouble. And I don't want anyone dying because of her foolishness. 
All right, excellent. So you can see the other people must have skipped it and they're still already going. So it does happen if you watch all of the uh, story bits, but an excellent opening cutscene there. Giving you a lot of background information on some of the events which happened in the original Guild Wars. Um, like the Fire and, and King Adelburn and all of that. So we're going through some of that in this video in between cutscenes as well as dealing with the combat. That was the first bit. You missed just the first bit there, but I think you have to search through uh, some of the uh, the coffins there to find the uh, the enemy boss. Right, so you what you gotta watch out for in a lot of these dungeons as well. There's a lot of traps and stuff, which sometimes you can. Uh, Yep, so the red circles come up, so you want to avoid those, as well as the fire there. Still got me, but... You'll notice that most of the enemies you'll fight in the dungeons will have like a, a silver, you see at the top there, silver ring around their nameplate, or their face there. Basically means that they're harder enemies. Because obviously we're in a... Uh, a group of five players it's not just going to shove random you know like normal quality enemies at you they're harder ones and then you'll see some of the other ones as well are uh, champions as well which are even harder but that's generally the bosses as you saw then uh, you've got to sort of dodge around these uh Faster. You've got to dodge around the traps that come out of the floor and then you can disable them that's a champion there you can see by the main play there. So those are bosses and harder enemies and stuff like that. Alright, so you've got to head down here. As you can see, the story mode dungeons aren't massively challenging. That's why they've got the explorable modes. Yeah, remember to roll through the fire. Oh. my own advice. Great. A bravely rest. Okay. Faster. But like they were saying in the opening cutscene, a couple hundred years ago during the events of Guild Wars 1, um, the Char invaded Ascalon, which was at that time the uh, where the humans were based. And the Char invaded and they were winning and they were going to take Ascalon. The current king of Ascalon at the time, King Adelbert, he decided that defeat wasn't an option, so he used his uh, magical sword, Magdir, to cause what's known as the Foe Fire, which is when they killed all of the attacking Char attacking Ascalon City, but then also killed all of the, uh, what do you call it, the humans as well, turned them into uh, angry spirits, which is what you're seeing at the moment. I'll leave you to listen to this. Ridlock, what are you doing here? I came to stop you from inciting a full-scale ghost rampage. Why are you here? I'm looking for King Adelburn's legendary weapon, the sword called Magdir. Magdir? Magdir was destroyed when the Sorcerer King set off the full fire. I think it survived. I believe the sword will be found at the top of these stairs. You are following a foolish human legend. You of all people should know the power of legends. You bear Magdare's twin, Sohothan. It was Rurik's sword. What if I do? Adelburn's sword is no more, just like his nation. Then let us go up the stairs and see for ourselves. Right, excellent. So, we found Erster Gulkin, and she's looking for um, 
that I was talking about that sword of King Adelburn, Magdir. Uh, she's looking for that sword. And Prince Rurik is using Sohothin, which is the twin of that sword. So you probably notice if you had any dealings with Ritlock Brimstone yet, he's using a fiery dragon sword. Which in the original Guild Wars was Prince Rurik's sword. Prince Rurik is the son of King Adelburn, if you didn't guess. Prince of Ascalon at the time. Okay, when you kill a, uh, a particularly difficult enemy, just look out on the map, your, there might be a little chest symbol, Meet which means spirit. you can go and loot those chests. Ritlock, the broken sword. It's the twin to your own. Worry more about the sword's master. Look there! I sense Sahothan's presence. Rurik, my son! You've returned! Your son is dead. So is your kingdom. Leave us! Foul creature. Your entire race will pay. Even now, my champions prepare to invade the surface. You will fall before the might of Master Major Nente, Deadly Kasha Blackblood, and the lovers Rolina and Vassal. We'll destroy you as you destroyed us! You frighten no one with your meaningless threats. We've killed you before. We'll do it again. Now you've angered them. They were already angry. Now we must find his champions and silence them. Right, so we need to find the uh, champions of King Adelburn and we'll fight them. I mean, another one here, these champions, uh, they're actually characters from the original Guild Wars as well. Just been downed, got caught off guard by a uh, massive cave troll. So hopefully, a couple of my party members will let me up. Excellent. So yeah, I was just saying, Master Ranger Nente, Kasha Blackblood, these are all characters from the original Guild Wars. So when you first started a character in Guild Wars, depending on what um, profession you chose, you'd be trained by one of these guys. Your desire to destroy is still unsatisfied, beast. Burning Ascalon, not enough for you. As long as you stalk us, we'll fight you tooth and claw. By the Landru's will, I will rend you from this world, Char. Right. So, let's kill Master Ranger Nente once and for all. Like I said, he was in the original Guild Wars, so if you chose a Ranger at the start, that was a particularly easy fight, to be fair. <laughs> Normally people skip the cutscenes and they're halfway through the fight before you start. But there's nothing wrong with watching the cutscenes. It is story mode. So it should be expected. So yeah, if you chose a ranger in the original Guild Wars game, then you would be trained by Master Ranger Nente. So your first couple of missions in the game, uh, getting your first ranger skill, should be uh, dealing with him. He's even got the same haircut, although the graphics are better obviously. So now we've just got to defeat Kasha Blackblood and then Relena and Vassar. So yeah, if you make your way back to this middle bit where you fought King Adelburn, um, then you can see there's a couple of different places we've got to go to fight these champions. 
but normally you know if you're playing with four other people a couple of them should know what they're doing as well because it's quite an early level um, dungeon so it's not particularly difficult oh yeah. Like Relena and Basan. So obviously as a ghost, be aware they do pop up at random times. They don't adhere to the physical restrictions of the mortal world. They, they come out of the floor, they come out of the walls, so just watch your back on that one. Okay, we're we'll entered the lover's crypt where we're gonna fight Relena and Basar. So there's two bosses here that you have to fight at the same time. There's one of them. Invaders in this holy place. How rude! I will summon my dear Lazar and together we will make short work of you. Careful, she's not a friend. Keep them apart. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the aim here is you want to keep them apart, as the closer they are together, the stronger they are. It's not exactly a massive deal in story mode, as it's not particularly difficult. As you can see, story mode is what it says, it's story mode, tactics aren't really so relevant. As long as you've got five players, you shouldn't have any problems unless none of them know what they're doing at all, but there's always at least a couple that know what they're doing. Lucky for me. And okay, so now we need to fight Cash or Black Blood. Stand down, Spectre. We seek only to protect the living. Don't chat with her, heir. Dispatch her! Rightio. Bring it on, Kasha. So if you chose to be a necromancer in the original Guild Wars, you would be trained by Kasha Blackblood. So she may be familiar. She fought well in the trials on this world. With all this death, Adelbert's blood must be boiling by Very now. straightforward that was. Let's get on with the story. Oh. I was saying we can travel to this waypoint here. So the guy just linked that in the chat, so always make sure you have your chat window on, because they can uh, your teammates might speak to you about tactics or about things like this. So yeah, you travel to that waypoint, which makes it a bit quicker. Skips out a couple of enemies there. Champions are gone, Ghost. Just like your son and your kingdom. I will have my vengeance. Join me in death. Here we go. Time to fight King Adelburn. As you can see, he's got a purple thing around his name, so that's a that's like a proper boss. Magdare is shattered, but I know a blacksmith who can mend these pieces. Did you really think that if you got me a sword, you'd earn forgiveness? For you? The sword would be for Logan. What? Why would you risk our lives, my life, for that coward? I thought it would heal old wounds. It would remind you... Remind me of what? Betrayal? Ah, 
You've become a sentimental old woman. We're finished here. Why does Ridlock hate Logan? Mistakes from a lifetime ago. Best forgotten. Ritlock's right. I've gotten too sentimental. Too weak. Right, there you go. So that is a the dungeon ago, complete Asclonian Catacombs. He blames me. They all do. So obviously you get a reward the there, you'll get a rare right. bit of head armor, some money, XP. Love it. Always remember to thank your teammates. It's a polite thing to do. And look, a little bit more reward there, 50 silver. Level up as well. Decent amount of XP. Excellent. Now I've unlocked the elite skill, so I'll have a look at that. So there was a lot of interesting story in that dungeon. It's one of my favourite ones, as it links back a lot to Guild Wars 1, which I was a big fan of. Um, so it's quite interesting to see that. Obviously they're speaking about um, an event which happened, which broke up Destiny's Edge, which they're not telling you about. There's a couple of books that you can read, which bridge the gap between Guild Wars 1 and 2, which, which will... Uh, fill that in but basically Destiny's Edge was formed to defeat the Elder Dragons they were going they had a plan they went to fight one of the Elder Dragons but Logan didn't show up because he was had things with his queen that he had to do so obviously the other members of Destiny's Edge particularly Britlock as there was uh, animosity between them anyway char human um, he particularly hates Logan for it so obviously that's the main reason why Destiny's Edge um, was then disbanded effectively and also in that fight in the Elder Dragon where Logan didn't show up uh, one of the members of Destiny Egg, Snaff, who was an Azura, he died so that also doesn't make it any easier so anyway, thanks for watching guys I hope this was um, interesting for you and in the next video I'll be moving on with chapter 3 of the personal story so hope to see you soon, thanks guys